Welcome back to Business and Politics. We're talking to Mr. Array Perez of the Clark International Airport. Uh, so you mentioned the road. So you owe me three more projects. What, what, what are those? Yeah, so the next one is a, the upgrading and, um, of, of, of existing utilities and road networks. Okay. Because if you're going to... Within the civil aviation complex. Within the civil aviation complex. Yeah. Because if you're going to have lots of industries food terminal, uh, entertainment and events hub, yeah. attracting more people, thereby attracting more right. more cars. And right. We have to make sure that we are able to you know, accommodate, we'll have the capacity. Yeah. You don't want to traffic in Metro Manila in, in Clark, right? That's and, right. Yeah. So we, uh, we, people will need more Wi-Fi, yeah. so we have to be set. Yeah. Uh, people will need more water. Yeah electricity yeah. so those things are already envisioned to be done now so that once we have the the influx of these industries that brings commodities vehicles and people in in Clark we're prepared okay so that we don't get caught red-handed when they're already there that's the only time we're gonna think of them and gonna build them it's right. gonna be too late yeah it's gonna be disrupted yeah so what's the last two projects the last two projects is uh, the are, are the uh, ha coming up with a deve site development plan for the second runway. Okay. The significance of having a a second runway. A, a, a second. Third. It's a second runway. Okay. Yeah. Technically, it's a second runway. Okay. There, there used to be two runways existing, right. but the other one was decommissioned. It's not a runway anymore, but it's a taxiway. Taxiway. Okay. And we're not that that our project is not to build the second runway right away. Okay. It's just to come up with the technical specifications of that second runway. So that we Make are- provisions for the second runway. Yeah, we yeah. need to have specific measurements for the second runway. We need to have specific restrictions of developments around the runway. Yeah. Because the existing, uh, the, the plan for the second runway has existing locators. Okay. And we don't know what kind of uh, developments that can happen if, if they're affected right. really 100% or yeah. just partially right. if we don't have the technical plans. You don't want to tear down buildings later on when you're ready to yeah. build it. Yeah. And then okay. you know, just, just found to, only to find out that they're right. safe from, you know, just, say, just yeah. safe from tearing down because yeah. the alignment is not there. Right. There's the Air Force already using that area also. Is that, what's the... Are they going to remain there? Are they going to move? Or what's the discussion there? Now? Well, the, the government, I think, is planning to focus the, the operations of the Air, Air Force at the Basa Air Base. Oh, okay. It's just a, a, a nearby okay. uh, military air base okay. uh, beside Clark. Okay. So if that happens, then uh, we can move on to developing that huge space that they occupy now. Also, right. Yeah. So with two, two parallel runways, the significance there is you, you can have simultaneous takeoffs and landing, right? Is that, is that right? Unlike in Manila where you have crisscrossing runways, you can only use one runway at a time, right? Yeah, that's very ideal. Yeah. But for, you, for us to be able to do a parallel landing and takeoff yeah. is to have that distance of 2.4 at least that's what kilometers. you're that's what you're making provisions for yeah right, okay. uh, if, if it's lesser I don't know how lesser it is right but then you, you can't do parallel take off, and take, take off yeah. right, and, and landing yeah so we, we have to uh, to determine those things now right right so that we because we don't want to waste time we yeah. don't waste Want to I think that's good. You have the foresight, right? Mm -hmm. So, what's the last project? The, la the last one is something that gives some sense of belongingness and pride for the for the workforce of SIAC. Okay. For the the, the employees of SIAC, uh, if, if we are going to attract big invest investors and implement you huge investments, you need expertise, right? In we CIAC. need expertise yeah. and all. We have to show ourselves that we are capable of being good managers. Okay. Not just upskilling, yeah. you know, getting trainings, getting, you know, uh, con consultants to yeah. help us in implementing the projects, but also be able to have a space where we can work well. So the last 
of the seven flagship projects is the construction of the new headquarters okay. of the CIAC. It's not just a simple headquarters because we want that structure or facility to become a showcase of our innovation, right. showcase of uh, our plans for the future. Right. It's where investors could say, all right, um, we can see your vision. Yeah. Because in the, the current one that we have right now is we don't have enough space for, yeah. for meeting different uh, many investors at one time. Yeah. We don't have enough, uh, enough uh, space to showcase our plan. Sure. Because it's really, it really helps when people could visualize what we want to do. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the intention. And to get good talent, I mean, you need the people to locate. In like, I mean, I was thinking about yourself because you had to give up <laughs> maybe working in BGC, right, where your BC Day office is. You have to give that up to working. Like, I mean, what what did it take to convince you to give up the, the glitzy <laughs> lifestyle in, in BGC for, for Clark? Uh, uh, for, for one, it's about the challenge of doing something really big and great okay. for the country. Okay. I, and I know that because of the plans, the planning that took place and understanding of all these plans coming from where I used to work in BCDA, yeah. there's so much things that we can do for the airport, right. for the civil aviation complex. Yeah. So that attracted me well and of the course challenge the challenge yeah. and also the continuity of the things that I've done in the past because right. I've been there. Under a new role as president. Under a new, yeah. new role because yeah. I was a big part of, uh, you know, building the yeah. uh, the, ter the new terminal yeah, building. Yeah, you, you and Jake were yeah. <laughs> part of that team, right? And the yeah. privatization. Yeah. And building a new metropolis, uh, the new Clark City. Sure. Uh, we were part of building the the mega complexes for the sports. Right. Uh, during the Southeast Asian Games and yeah. managing them now. So it's still all related. Yeah. No, how, how, how do you how, how do you coordinate your plans so that it doesn't you know interfere? with the plans of Clark Development Corporation and LIPAD because there's a master plan of LIPAD, there's a master plan of, of SIAC, and there's also a master plan of, of CDC. Could you talk about maybe how you guys maybe um, consult each other or maybe make sure that you, know, you don't build, uh, let's say, an entertainment complex with something that needs peace and quiet, right, that Clark is, is building. Uh, can you talk about that, the, maybe just the coordination between yeah. those three bodies, right? Like any, like any master planners out there, you, you scan the environment, you right. scan all the available uh, master plans out there. Yeah. And there are so many plans for Clark. There's plans for CDC, yeah. the leisure and tourism area, there's plans like you said for Lipad, yeah. there's plans for the new Clark City and plans for the uh, Clark right. Civil Aviation Complex. Right. There's another one that's uh, the Clark Global City, they also have their own master plans. Right. So you incorporate all of the existing plans, yeah. but um, make sure that they're all aligned. Right. BCDA has been talking with our, the different. It's, so it's that's different good. There, there's dialogue, right? There's dialogue. Yeah. There's dialogue to make sure that you know the roads are connected well. Right. The utilities, the, uh, whether they're underground or overhead, are going to be able to seamlessly connect with each other. That's important too. Yeah. yeah. It, it's not like uh, you have a standard gauge and a narrow gauge for yeah. a rail. Yeah. So we don't want that. Right. It, just like the pipes for your sewage, the right. pipes for your drainage. Right. They should be the same. Yeah. You know, they're able to flow. Uh, water can flow well. Right. Right. So uh, things like those. So uh, BCD has been keeping in touch, coordinating with its different subsidiaries. Even before I uh, came in in SIAC, there were already uh, discussions with the different subsidiaries to align all of these plans. That's, that's good. Now, I know you said that you know, your, your, your grand ambition is really to put the Philippines in the regional map of Southeast Asia through, through Clark, right? But um, what about the effort to promote Central Luzon itself? What's the, because uh, that, that's an integral part of promoting the airport and, you know, uh, realizing your, your, your bigger vision for Southeast Asia, right? Does, does, does Central Luzon have enough to offer, you think, um, in terms of a destination? Uh, you've, you've been living in the area for a while now. What's, what's, your, what's your observation there? What's your take? Does it have enough to offer? It has us more than enough. Okay. More than enough. It's a different kind of lifestyle. Okay. It's the, the place 
not just Clark, not just Subic, but the entire Central Luzon provides a better quality of life. All right. Because uh, this, there are many pieces of land that are being managed by, you know, corporations like uh, SBMA, uh, CIAC, CDC, BCDA, and others that are integrated together that creates you know, different options for, for people, having a more livable place. Right. And uh, the growth uh, of, of these places are controlled as well mm -hmm. uh, because the, we have what we call a council that guides these different special economic zones in, 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 in coming up with their own master plans and implementations. Mm -hmm. so we have what we call a Subi Clark Alliance Development Council which aligns all of the plans of the different special economic zones in, 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 in Bataan, in Sambales, in, in Pampanga, Tarlac, and other provinces of Central Luzon. So we, we have those, and we have a regional development council spearheaded, which is a, the, a unit of the so layer of planning, yeah, right? A higher, high, yeah, higher level of planning. So we're, we're happy to work with them there's a lot of many offerings. Central Luzon is very gifted. Uh, all in Pampanga alone, you know, it's a smorgasbord of, of very um, delicious yeah, the delicacies. Culinary, uh, the culinary capital of the Philippines. The Philippines yeah. You have uh, uh, Subic. You've got all the amenities of Clark, but they have an ocean. You know, yeah, they, they have the, the port, sea. Yeah. They have the port. Yeah. Where you can enjoy a lot of um, water activities. Yeah. I, I know you, you've worked in the sports complex and, as you said, the airport and other projects, but as a relatively new transplant into to Clark, was there anything that surprised you in a good way or in a bad way? I mean, what's it like for, for you, uh, basically a city guy, right? Now living full time, working full time in Clark, was there anything that surprised you? Um, the warmth of the the people really encouraged me to stay. Okay. And the many, the many attractions in in Central Luzon. Mm. You know, I'm a very active, uh, very active guy. Okay. I I, I run. I do running. Okay. I do cycling. And so you can do that safely in <laughs> in Clark, right? Yeah, very safe. Very safe. Yeah. So it's not like it's my first time to be in Pampanga right. when I just got in Siya. Yeah, because you had many projects. You were involved in many projects. At, at the very beginning. In 2018, when we were building the sports complex at the New Clark City, I had to move there because I was part of the project management team. Ah, uh, you had to be on site. Okay. Yes. And also, at that time, the uh, new terminal building in Clark is being built. So I was also somehow you know, be involved in making sure that they are built up to specs. Right. So it was more of like I was pushed to go there. But then I learned to love the place. Uh, there's so many things that I can do with my family. It's, it's like lengthening my, my you know, Your my, lifespan. My lifespan. <laughs> You're not <laughs> inhaling the, yeah, the smog yeah. in Manila, huh? And I've never really uh, understood the concept of tra traffic. When uh, how long does it take to go to work in, in Clark for it you It just now? takes, uh, it's about 10 kilometers okay. from where I live to the where office. I work, to the yeah. office. It just takes me 10 to 15 minutes. Fantastic. Um, right. I wish we could say that in Metro Manila, right? Uh, uh, for, for them, for in Pampanga, for, for people to be stuck in a place for about two minutes is already traffic. Mm. But in Manila, I guess, uh, for 20 minutes, yeah, that's, that's, that's normal. normal. That's normal. Right? So then when I embrace that and I've got used to that kind of quality of life, when I, whenever I come to Manila, it's like I dread going back to Manila and staying. <laughs> I just want to go out immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because of work, I had the, 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 the capital and all the national government agencies, which uh, I need to work with, are here. So I, I, keep, I have to keep going back and forth. But hopefully in the future, because there's a, a, already a plan back then to make Clark as a backup government center right. of, of, of the government, and uh, hopefully that could work out. Uh, government agencies should start looking of moving some of its units, at it's least. Personnel, not, yeah. Yeah, it's personnel. Ma many of the things that we do are not really needed here in the capital. You know, yeah. you don't need to be in the capital to do your work. Right. 
Well, you know, Array, very, very ambitious projects, very interesting. We'll be watching it very carefully. I, I hope you stay much longer than Jake so you can uh, see through these projects. But uh, I want to thank you for your time. But before we go, maybe you want to leave our viewers with a message? Uh, yes. I'd like to invite everyone to go to Clark because we have a very beautiful airport. We have a very beautiful place. You can enjoy many things. Enjoy food. Enjoy an active lifestyle. You can bike. You can safely. You can jog anywhere. You can bring your family. You've got one of the biggest uh, um, water parks uh, in Southeast Asia or Asia with, uh, in Clark. There are many things that you can do, not just in Clark, but also in uh, Pampanga, in Subic, in, in other many places. You can go hiking. There's so many outdoor activities, you know. It's befitting for, for us at this very competitive age where we're all, we're all a technology-driven technology driven age where we're all just in our couches looking at our um, laptops, our cell phones. We have to bring our kids, our children outside and us as well who work hard. There are many uh, activities that we can do, enjoy life out there. We've got very nice infrastructure in uh, central Luzon. So please do come, uh, travel, use uh, the Clark, the CRK, the Clark International Airport, enjoy food, go to the sports complexes, the world-class sports complexes. They have weekly activi activities. You can join uh, duathlons, triathlons, and many other marathons up there. In fact, there's one in December 17, which uh, is the opening of that connection of the Clark to the new Clark City, which they call the, the airport uh, access road to new Clark City, airport to new Clark City access road. It's going to be a marathon that will take place there. So please visit and, and see what, what, I'm, what I'm telling about. Well, uh, Ray, really thank you very much. I think I'll skip the marathon. I'll go straight to the food tour. <laughs> <laughs> but I really thank you. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I'd like to thank also our, our viewers watching this program today and those watching the replay. I'd like to thank Pastor Paul Riboy for making this program possible. This has been Business and Politics. I'm Dante Klinkang, and I will see you next week. Thank you very much.